Most products don't need the cheapest microcontroller or the most powerful one. Once you factor in development time, debugging, tooling, and the cost of fixing mistakes later, both extremes can end up costing you more than you think. What most products need instead is a microcontroller that gives you the most bang for your buck. And when I say bang for your buck, I'm not just talking about unit price and raw performance. I'm also talking about the total cost of building a product, including development time, tooling, ecosystem maturity, long-term availability, and how painful it is to get from prototype to production. And that's where a lot of designs either succeed or fall apart. So here are the top five microcontrollers available today that give you the most bang for your buck. Hi, I'm John Teal. I was a microchip design engineer for Texas Instruments for over 10 years before developing and launching my own hardware product, and now I help others do the same. Okay, let's get started with number five, which is the GD32V from Giga Device. So the GD32V is a RISC-V based microcontroller family aimed primarily at cost sensitive designs. It earns a place on this list because in the right situation, it delivers real value that ARM based parts can struggle to match on price. Although you've probably never heard of them before, Giga Device isn't a small company, and they actually ship massive volumes of flash memory and microcontrollers. So with the GD32V, you get the expected peripherals for this class of product, including GPIO, timers, ADCs, SPI, I2C, UART, DMA, and in some variants, USB or CAN bus. Now, from a functional standpoint, it covers most control and interface needs just fine. The value proposition, though, comes down to cost structure. Using an open source RISC-V architecture avoids ARM licensing fees, which can allow a lower unit cost. But the trade-off is ecosystem maturity. The Giga device tooling works and the compiler support is pretty solid, but the documentation quality and community depth aren't as strong as some other options on this list. That means these parts make the most sense when cost really matters and you've got an experienced firmware team that's comfortable validating things themselves. Just be aware, this isn't a very commonly used microcontroller, so most developers are going to have no experience with it. Okay, real quick before we get to number four, if you need help selecting the best microcontroller for your product, then I've created a free microcontroller selector tool. It asks a few questions about your product and helps narrow down the best options for you. The link's in the description below, or you can scan this QR code right here. Microcontroller number four is the NRF52 series from Nordic Semiconductor. So if your product needs Bluetooth low energy and it's battery powered, the overall value of the NRF52 is extremely hard to beat. One big reason for that is the Bluetooth radio is fully integrated and Nordic has spent years optimizing it for low power. With it, you can achieve extremely low transmit and receive currents compared to most other BLE solutions, which is why these parts show up so often in battery-powered BLE devices. Now, from a unit cost standpoint, the NR52 isn't cheap compared to many other microcontrollers, but bang for your buck isn't about picking the lowest cost chip, it's about maximizing what you get for your money. And for BLE products, the NR52 is hard to beat. Nordic's BLE stacks are mature and stable, their RF performance is excellent, and their power efficiency is best in its class. Nordic's documentation, tooling, and reference designs make it much easier to build a reliable BLE product that behaves consistently in the field. Another overlooked factor is longevity. Nordic parts tend to have long product life cycles and stable software support, which matters if you're building a product you expect to ship and support for years. If Bluetooth isn't a core requirement for your product, well, the NR52 usually doesn't make sense. But if BLE is a core requirement, especially in a battery-powered product, well, then the NRF52 chip often ends up being the best solution. Although for most wireless products, I suggest using a pre-certified module, such as those from Fansdale that are based on the Nordic NRF52 series. 
And one last thing, BLE isn't just for short range communication. And there are some very long range BLE options available that have line of sight ranges over a kilometer. Microcontroller number three is the RP2350 from Raspberry Pi. So the RP2350 delivers a surprising amount of capability for the price without pushing you into a more expensive or more complex class of processor. It actually includes two ARM Cortex M33 cores and also includes two RISC-V cores. Now you don't run both architectures at the same time, but you can choose which one you build your firmware around. That choice is made in software by default, which gives you flexibility without locking you into a specific ecosystem up front. Now from a performance standpoint, the Cortex M33 cores with floating point units are a meaningful step up from the Cortex M0 Plus cores used in the earlier RP2040. They're well suited for products that need real-time control, more complex firmware, or math-heavy processing while still behaving like a microcontroller with deterministic timing and straightforward debugging. One of the biggest practical upgrades compared to the RP2040 and many other low-cost microcontrollers is the amount of on-chip SRAM that you get. With roughly 520 kilobytes available, you have much more flexibility for buffers, logging, diagnostics, and future firmware growth than you do on many other low-cost microcontrollers. That extra memory doesn't just make development easier. It also reduces the risk of having to redesign hardware later as features grow. Security is another area where the RP2350 stands out for the price. It supports features like trust zones, secure boot, and firmware protection, which matter for products where security is important. Like the RP2040, the RP2350 still requires external flash memory, and that helps keep costs flexible and avoids locking you into a fixed memory size chip. Combined with the performance, memory, and security features, the RP2350 delivers a lot of capability at a cost that stays much closer to low-end microcontrollers than it does to premium ones. Number two is the STM32G0 from ST Microelectronics. So if I had to pick a single professional default microcontroller that gives you the most bang for your buck, well, this would be it. The STM32G0 delivers a good balance of cost, capability, and ecosystem maturity without unnecessary complexity. For most non-wireless products, it does everything you need it to do without making your life harder than it has to be, which is exactly what you want when you're trying to move toward production. You're getting a Cortex M0 Plus core with enough performance for control, sensing, communication, and general product logic, along with a solid peripheral set, flexible pin options, all available in a wide variety of configurations and packages. That combination covers a huge percentage of products, from simple controllers all the way to more advanced embedded systems. If you're familiar with the STM32F series, the G series is basically a newer, more cost-efficient evolution of it. The G series gives you similar capability, but with lower power consumption and often better pricing. What really makes the STM32G0 attractive is the large ecosystem around it. The documentation is solid, reference designs are plentiful, and behavior of the parts is really well understood. That reduces risk during development and, just as importantly, reduces surprises once you start building units in volume. It's also relatively easy to find engineers who already know the STM32, which lowers onboarding time and makes collaboration smoother as your team grows or changes. And that translates directly into lower development cost and faster iteration. Another practical advantage is supply chain and longevity, which matters a lot when you're planning for a product life cycle measured in years, not just in months. For many products that don't need wireless, the STM32G0 hits the sweet spot. It's not flashy, 
but it's stable and well supported, which is exactly what you want when you're manufacturing at scale. Don't forget that microcontroller selector tool I mentioned earlier is linked in the description if you want to try it out. All right, microcontroller number one that gives you the most bang for your buck is the ESP32 S3 from Espresso. This earns a top spot for a huge range of products because it packs a lot into a relatively cheap chip. You're getting a dual core processor, flexible peripherals, plenty of memory options, and integrated wireless all in a single chip that's widely available and well supported. If your product needs Wi-Fi or maybe Bluetooth, the value of the ESP32 S3 is really hard to argue with. Due to its popularity and low cost, it's also pretty common to even use the ESP32 even in products that don't need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Many developers already know the platform, understand the tool chain, and can move quickly without switching ecosystems. That shortens development cycles, reduces debugging friction, and helps small teams iterate without juggling multiple microcontroller families. Another benefit is it's easy to purchase the ESP32 S3 as a development kit for early prototyping, as a pre-certified module for production, or as a bare chip for custom radio designs. Where the ESP32 can cause problems is using it by default without thinking through power consumption and system level trade-offs. The ESP32 S3 is an extremely flexible platform, which is why it earns the number one spot for overall bang for your buck. But it's also worth mentioning the ESP32 C6, this is a RISC-V based part that adds Wi-Fi 6 and also supports Thread and Zigbee. So if your product specifically needs those protocols, the C6 can be a good option. But for most products, the ESP32 S3 remains the safer pick. If you want help making decisions like these and avoiding expensive mistakes as you move from prototype to production, you can get support through my Hardware Academy or my private mentoring program. And if you found this video useful, the next one you should watch is this one here where I review the most powerful microcontrollers available today.